Hello, I'm Pastor Mark Just of Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Winnipeg, Manitoba. The location is 2528 King Edward Street, and this is the midweek Advent service for December 16th in the year of our Lord 2020. We begin as we sing 849, Praise the One Who Breaks the Darkness. <laughs> Quenching thirst in every land. <laughs> may be made by all in remembrance of their baptism. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our psalm is Psalm 149. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song, his praise in the assembly of the godly. Let Israel be glad in his maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing, making melody to him with tambourine and lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He adorns the humble with salvation. Let the godly exult in glory. Let them sing for joy on their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their throats and two-edged swords in their hands to execute vengeance on the nations and punishments on the peoples, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute on them justice, on them judgment written. This is honor for all his godly ones. Praise the Lord. Our second reading is from Isaiah chapter 32, verses 1 through 20. Behold, a king will reign in righteousness, and princes will rule in justice. Each will be like a hiding place from the wild, a shelter from the storm, like streams of water in a dry place, like the shade of a great rock in a weary land. Then the eyes of those who see will not be closed, and the ears of those who hear will give attention. The heart of the hasty will understand and know, and the tongue of the stammerers will hasten to speak distinctly. The fool no longer be called noble, nor the scoundrel said to be honorable. 
for the fool speaks folly, and his heart is busy with iniquity, to practice ungodliness, to utter error concerning the Lord, to leave the craving of the hungry unsatisfied, and to deprive the thirsty of drink. As for the scoundrel, his devices are evil. He plans wicked schemes to ruin the poor with lying words, even when the plea of the needy is right. But he who is noble plans noble things, and on noble things he stands. Rise up, you women who are at ease, hear my voice. You complacent daughters, give ear to my speech. In little more than a year, you will shudder, you complacent women, for the grape harvest fails, the fruit of harvest will not come. Tremble, you women who are at ease, shudder, you complacent ones. Strip and make yourselves bare and tie sackcloth around your waist. Beat your breasts for the pleasant fields, for the fruitful vine, for the soil of my people, growing up in thorns and briars, Yes, for all the joyous houses in the exultant city. For the plate, for the palace is forsaken. The populous city is d deserted. The hill and the watchtower will become dens forever. A joy of wild donkeys, a pasture of flocks. Until the Spirit poured upon us from on high. And the wilderness becomes a fruitful field and the fruitful field is deemed a forest. Then justice will dwell in the wilderness, and righteousness abide in the fruitful field. And the effect of righteousness will be peace, and the result of righteousness, quietness and trust forever. My people will abide in a peaceful habitation, in secure dwellings and in quiet resting places, and it will hail when the forest falls down, and the city will be laid utterly low. Happy are you who sow beside all waters, who lets the feet of the ox and the donkey rage free. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our next lesson is from the book of Revelation, chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. After this, I looked, and behold, the door standing open in heaven, and the first voice which I heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, Come up here, and I will show you what must first take place after this. At once I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne stood in heaven, with one seated on the throne. And he who sat there had the appearance of Jasper and Carnelian. And around the throne was a rainbow that had the appearance of an emerald. Around the throne were twenty-four stones, and seated on the thrones were twenty-four elders, clothed in white garments with golden crowns on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning and rumbles and peals of thunder. And before the throne were burning seven torches of fire, which are the seven spirits of God, before the throne, there was, as it were, a sea of glass, like crystal. And around the throne, on each side of the throne, are four living creatures, full of eyes in front and behind. The first living creature, like a lion. The second like living creature, like an ox. The third living creature, with the face of a man and the fourth living creature, like an eagle in flight. And the four living creatures, each of them with six wings, are full of eyes all around and within. And day and night, they never cease to say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is to come. And whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him, who is seated on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the twenty-four elders fall down before him, who is seated on the throne, and worship him who lives forever and ever. 
they cast, they cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and power and honor. For you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our next hymn is 792, The God of Abraham Praise. Now, before I begin, I want to um, let you know that there are four flats in this hymn. Um, it is a hymn of praise and adoration, so a little bit different outside of the Advent realm or genre of hymns for this season. And yes, there are nine verses, but it is a wonderful hymn. And by all means, feel free to sing along. Just give me a second. <clears throat> Seven hundred and ninety-eight, the God of Abraham prays. Thank you. 
and plenty bless a land of liberty and endless rest. Their milk and honey flow, and oil and wine abound, and trees of life forever grow with mercy crowned. Verse 7. <laughs> Verse 9 is a Trinitarian hymn, so if you're able to, please stand. <laughs> reading from the Gospel of Mark, the 14th chapter, verses 51 to 72. And a young man followed him with nothing but a linen cloth about his body. And they seized him, but he left the linen cloth and ran away naked. And they led Jesus to the high priest. And all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. And Peter followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest. And he was sitting with the guards and warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were seeking testimony against Jesus to put him to death. But they found none. For many bore, wit for many bore false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. And some stood and bore false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. Yet even about this, the testimony did not agree. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, Have you no answer to make? What is it that these men testify against you? But he remained silent and made no answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the blessed? And Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. The high priest tore his garments and said, what further witnesses do we need? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? And they all condemned him as deserving death. 
And some began to spit on him, and to cover his face, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy! The guards received him with blows. And as Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came, and seeing Peter warming himself, she stood, looked at him, and said, You also were, the Nazarene, were with the Nazarene Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you mean. And he went into the gateway, and the rooster crowed. And the servant girl saw him and began to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. And after a little while the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I do not know this man of whom you speak. And immediately the rooster crowed a second time. And Peter remembered how Jesus had said to him, Before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy God, holy and most gracious Father, have mercy and hear us. We pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In our time together, we will have a devotion from faith alone. The text is the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 14. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. The Word became flesh. We can never fully grasp this teaching concerning our salvation and eternal life using human reason. Nevertheless, we must believe it, and we must cling tightly to what Scripture says about it. The Bible says that Christ, our Lord, is true and natural God and true and natural man. The Bible says that in his divine essence and nature, Christ is co-equal with the Father. The heretics have cast doubts on both the divine nature and the human nature of Christ. During the lifetime of the apostles, some heresies claimed that Christ was not God. Centuries later, others claim that Christ was not human. Some of our contemporaries teach similar things. They claim that because he was conceived solely by the Holy Spirit, Christ could not have been a human being like we are. He could not have had the same kind of body that we do. They insist that because he was a man from heaven, his body must have been from heaven too. That's why I urgently warn believers to be aware of religious splinter groups. I urgently... Sorry... If Christ isn't true 
and natural God born in eternity of the Father. And if he isn't the creator of all creatures, then we are doomed. What good are Christ's suffering and death to us if he was only a human being like you and me? If he were just a human, he could not have overpowered the devil, death, or sin. He would have been too weak for them and never would have been able to help us. We must have a Savior who is true God and Lord over sin, death, hell, and the devil. Christ is eternal in nature, lacks nothing in his being, and is perfect in every way. Here ends our reading. In Lutheran Service Book, please turn to page 283. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness, and let your saints shout for joy. Lord, keep this nation under your care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon the earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. For the needy shall not always be forgotten, and the hope of the poor shall not perish forever. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Let my cry come to you. Let us pray. Worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. Give us the faith to behold the majesty of your presence in simple words, simple water, and simple bread and wine, as you come to us in the very body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray together Luther's evening prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. <clears throat> now for our closing hymn, we have 402, The Only Son from Heaven. The only Son from heaven.
Christ the Virgin born. Grim death to vanquish for us, to hope and him before us, and bring us life again. Again, another Trinitarian verse, verse 4. O Father, here before you, with God the Holy Ghost, and Jesus we adore you, O Pride of Angel Host. Before you, mortals lonely, cry, Holy, 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 O Blessed Trinity. If you have any comments or questions regarding what you have heard today, by all means, please give me a call or text at 431-335-6219. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe to this channel. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.